today I was going to kind of do like a kind of short and casual just recap of BioC 2020, which was the bioconductor conference that was in July of this year out in Seattle. Um, uh, there was this fun tweet that had some notes about um, kind of like the conference by the numbers. Um, I guess only 99 people were there in person, felt like more than that, but there was like 99 people from like all over the country and all over the world that, you know, are excited about Bioconductor. So fun to talk to. Um, and I guess there was way more virtual attendees than I had uh, known. There was a lot of like virtual speakers as well, but I thought it was pretty smooth as far as like virtual conferences go. Um, and then there was like many keynotes. Uh, There's a lot of different workshops about like packages that are both like new, new to Bioconductor and also like old. Um, yeah, so this is just kind of some breakdowns of where it was. And then this was a photo I took in a Space Needle. So it was fun traveling out to the conference and it was like a cool group of people to get to interact with. I would definitely recommend it as a conference if people are looking to go in the future. Um, so I really racked my memory trying to remember all the interesting and useful things people talked about um, and there was a lot. So I really wanna just like mostly point you guys to the publicly available resources that came out of the conference. Um, namely, like there's this scheduled link that lets you see all of the different talks that happened. Um, so there's different keynotes and then you can click into these, uh, like there's the different short talks. And if you click into, you can see the list of the titles of the topics, which might help you figure out which ones are interesting to you. Um, so they have all of those talks. And then I think um, there's also like links for the ones that they have up on YouTube. They have most of them up. And there is also a YouTube playlist. Um, some of these uh, titles are more informative than others, but it's also like, this is an easy way to like navigate this as well. Um, so these are like recordings of all the talks. So if you need to revisit them or like see what people are talking about, they're up here. Um, this is cool because not all of these packages are available on Bioconductor yet. Some of them are in the works. Maybe they'll be out in the October release. Um, but yeah, um, all, most, of, most of the sessions and talks are on this playlist. So that was a good job they did there. Um, yeah, so it was a three-day event. Um, and as many, many talks, I would encourage people to go through here. I have some highlighted that I went to and that were relevant to my work. So um, might not be relevant to what everybody else is interested in, but we'll just run through this. Um, so I also wanted to highlight um, the people from Libra who did speak. Um, so I gave a talk on TREGS, um, so data driven identification of total RNA expression genes, um, which I'm sure many of you have already heard about, but um, I was able to give a talk. It was my first talk at a conference, and that was a pretty positive experience. Um, Josh gave a talk on QSVA, QSVAR, um, and then Abby gave a talk about uh, the DLPFC spatial project, and Lucas gave a talk on NNSVG. I tried scouring Twitter. I could not find an action shot of his talk, but <laughs> um, yeah. So it was like uh, great to see people from Libre uh, present on their work. Um, and then I wanted to point out some of the different keynotes that I thought were pretty interesting. So the first one was this learning from data in single cell transcriptomics um, from Serene Dudat. Uh, I hope I pronounced that right. Um, and she, this was like a pretty jam-packed talk and it was like her group had evaluated and evaluated many, many methods for the different steps in single cell processing. Um, uh, yeah, so they, they did like a ton of work and have a lot of resources and talks. So if you work on single cell, this is probably one worth watching. Um, there was also a great talk by Vermont Rikuchi from University of Michigan Public Health. And she talked a lot about both like her career in public health and statistics, and also like um, kind of like the impact of like COVID-19 and how that presented some like new, like, you know, some an interesting opportunity from like the public health lens and also like, you know, challenges at the same time. Um, so she had like kind of like a personal story and kind of like more talked about like career and like the impact of uh, 
like public health and like she works with a lot with like uh, I think she had like running like a high school camp. Um, so that was like a cool talk to see kind of that. Um, but then she did talk about this method Samba that um, her group has developed that corrects for bias in different data sets. And she talked about that and how bias can often be like overlooked, um, but should be like considered and like kind of like where your data kit came from is very important when you are interpreting the results. So that was also another great talk. Um, and then these are maybe, uh, and then um, more single cell stuff. So uh, there's a talk about assessing cellular heterogeneity across time and disease. So this was another one that was like really relevant from um, to COVID and they were studying the effect of like COVID in the lungs and how like the different lung tissue um, like responded. So it was cool and they had some great images. So this is the from Julius Riemann from University of Illinois in Chicago med school, I believe. Um, and then I think that my favorite keynote, um, which again, if you are working with single cell stuff, I would recommend watching um, is bringing single cell genomics closer to the clinic for patients with leukemia. So this is Scott Fermlin from the Fred Hutch Cancer Research Center, which is out in Seattle. Um, so he kind of had like these really, really interesting examples about how at the Cancer Institute, they're using single cell sequencing from individual patients that they were treating to kind of determine whether, like how to proceed with their cancer treatment. Um, and so this is like an example that he had where, um, they were like, it was a basically like um, a leukemia patient who had received a, a like um, bone marrow transplant. So most of his uh, like blood was now the genotype from the donor of the um, bone marrow that is in blue. So they were able to sequence his blood at one or like take a sample of his blood, do single cell sequencing, and then kind of see that like the donor blood lined up with the reference for blood. So these are like normal blood cells and you can see that in the UMAP. And then they're able to identify that like there was some prevalence of cancer again because the his genotype was showing up as this unique um, cluster that like looked more like cancer. So it was like a cool thing to see how like single cell uh, sequencing could be applied to like, you know, diagnostic diagnosis in like real time. I thought that was really neat. And they had come up with two new um, methods, um, ViewMaster, which I think was helping uh, like quickly classify cells and single cell sequencing, you know, a big challenge. And then Supercell, which had to do with assigning the genotype to the single cells, which is how they're able to um, uh, kind of look at the data through the genotype lens. Um, so yeah, I thought that that was a really, really great talk. And um, yeah, so I definitely checked that one out. Um, yeah, so then I have like some just of the short talks uh, highlighted. Most of them are single cell again. That's just what was on my mind in July. So I spent a lot of time at those um, sessions. But um, I thought a great talk was from Cindy Fang, um, who is currently at University of Toronto, but she recently joined um, John Hopkins Biostatistics Group as a PhD student, I believe. Um, so yeah, straight out of her undergrad, she gave this talk, which was very impressive. And this was on predictive modeling of data set specific single cell RNA-seq pipeline performance. So I guess, again, back to that theme, which there are many, many methods for performing single cell analysis. Um, and basically what that group had come up, you know, they were trying to benchmark and what they came up with is that pipeline performance is data set, data set specific, which like, uh, I think when I had done all that work, looking at like deconvolution, uh, pipelines and deconvolution benchmarking, it's like performance is data set specific. There isn't necessarily like a perfect pipeline for every data set, which is, a, you know, adds complication, but they had an interesting, um, they uh, came up with a machine learning model that could predict pipeline performance for a lot of combinations of methods and um, I guess like arguments for those methods, um, like different and like, you know, parameters for those methods, like a huge number of different combinations. And they ran, I believe, almost 300 data sets through them. Um, and they came up with this package called Pipe Comp, which um, is like predicts how well uh, uh, like a pipeline will do for your data. I don't think it spells out exactly what how you should treat your data yet. I think that 
like based on that talk, which um, I think that like eventually they're hoping that to be able to recommend a data set specific pipeline based on like um, the like different like parameters of your data. So I think this was really cool. Um, it's definitely like a challenge, you know, something people spend a long time on. Um, and then more single cell stuff this time was like um, differential expression, which is like, I guess, something that people are getting more curious about. So it, there is this package Dreamlet, which basically applies uh, the like differential expression, I guess, like method dream, but to for single cell and kind of like simplifies that um, and uses H5 AD files to kind of like help with the memory challenges of working with single cell data. Um, I don't think this is out yet. I could not find it. So maybe it'll be public this fall. So um, maybe we'll look into that as we um, maybe start asking differential expression questions of single cell data. And then um, another method to identify like differently regulated genes. So something that's a little bit adjacent to maybe like, uh, like leaf cutter, but for single cell. So this is differential regulation from Simone Taberti from the University of Zurich. So Again, just like um, kind of like gearing up some um, like bulk single cell methods or bulk methods, but for single cell and kind of like adjusting and specializing them for like the challenges of single cell. Um, and then, yeah, <laughs> more single cell stuff. But I went to this great workshop that was tidy transcriptomics for single cell RNA sequencing analysis. Um, so if you like the tidyverse and you um, like working with single cell stuff, um, this was neat. Um, so we kind of just took through like understanding the tidy single cell experiment, which is like a different way to basically it's like a different view of the SCE object in R. Like it looks like a tibble, but it still is your single cell experiment object. Um, you kind of look directly at the column data and then you can bring in um, like more new rows that are like gene expression if you want, if that's relevant to your like as it's relevant to what you want to look at. Um, and then uh, basically using tidyverse tools on the SCG object to do like common, um, like, like common uh, manipulations, and like ask common questions, like how many of this cell type do I have? Um, but then also maybe tricky ones, like how many of this cell type do I have? And what does the expression look like between these two sets? Like things that might take you longer in, I guess, like the standard view, but if you can like bring, if you can combine your call data and your expression data very quickly and easily and gene wise, there's some advantages there. And then we also made a 3D U map, which is, I guess, like a fun visualized challenge. So I just pulled out two, heat, two uh, uh, screenshots real quick, one that shows like that um, the single cell experiment, but like in this tidy single cell view, um, and then also how uh, pretty like pretty easily you can leverage uh, Plotly um, to make this uh, 3D U map, which looks pretty cool. Um, and then another package that uh, um, Leo had pointed out and thought might be relevant um, to some work that we're up to is, is COLA, which was um, general framework for consensus partitioning, which basically like found consensus across like different clustering algorithms. Um, and also again, Clustering can be a, a challenge in um, optimizing clustering, um, especially so like being able to see like where maybe different methods like fall and like come to like one consensus on a data set uh, maybe helps alleviate some of the, uh, the burden of having to choose one. Um, and then also uh, pointed out the spatial analysis of high dimensional in situ cytometry data that was maybe really relevant to um, looking at some of the spatial data that we have. Um, um, so this was um, an advanced workshop. I missed this. I didn't go to this one because it's uh, advanced for um, sp uh, spatial, which I'm not, don't feel like I'm quite there yet, but you know, soon. Um, but basically like uh, this was a workshop that tackled um, this whole list of tools. Um, like you can see in this little uh, visualization here, like tackled many, many tools that are useful and were useful for analyzing um, spatial data. Um, so uh, this might be a great resource for learning a lot about what do we have, seven different packages. So yeah. Um, and then there was also a lot of talk about the different BioC communities and programs that kind of like 
spring up. So um, there is R ladies and bio C, which like, um, you know, uh, kind of there was discussion about like, uh, you know, a lot of people who work with R work with like biological data. So there was discussion about like, how do we both uh, at our ladies groups, like tackle, like people want to learn advanced topics about like bioconductor and they want to get into like advanced biological questions with R, but at the same time, like remain maintaining that accessibility for people who are new to R or maybe like use R for different topics. Um, so there was like a great discussion around that. Um, also accessibility about like colorblind, like, you know, uh, accessible plots, like colorblindness and um, that sort of thing. And also, uh, um, we're getting another <laughs> second example. Um, but yeah, there is a, a discussion about that and about how to keep like plots accessible and uh, other things, um, as well as translation groups. So I, I think uh, Leo might have more to comment about that, but there is, um, they commented about how they're recruiting people to help uh, translate different sections of the bioconductor website, like vignettes for um, popular um, packages into many, many different languages and about how much that program has picked up steam and been able to translate uh, wide swaths of the bioconductor website into like many languages and like um, how that's been like a really successful program. And then they were like, you know, trying to spread the word and trying to get more people involved. Um, so um, cool stuff. And then they um, also were pushing uh, like a new program called Package Mentorship because like they know that there's packages that are on GitHub um, and then getting them onto Bioconductor, uh, people sometimes shy away from because it seems, seems hard. And there's a lot of steps, you know, to getting your BioC check done. So basically um, they're pack, uh, pairing people who have um, successfully completed many packages um, and have like packages on Bioconductor with people who maybe have like a, you know, it's on, it's on bio, it's on GitHub, it's almost there, getting people to kind of like get their package there and realize that it's not that unachievable of a goal that like you can do it. Um, so uh, kind of like mentoring people and then hopefully expanding the amount of great packages that we can have on Bioconductor. And um, I believe that that is still like, you can still join that. I should have found the link, but um, like, yeah, if anybody's interested uh, in that or, know someone who might need a little help. I think that they were, they were looking for mentees more than they were looking for mentors. Um, so uh, yeah, I think that's all I had. Um, um, I'll be sure to share these slides. Um, and I know that this wasn't super long, so I would encourage people to like go and just like go through the schedule and like see if any of these talks look interesting. The short talks are like less than 10 minutes and um, are really, jam-packed with cool stuff and like really awesome work people have been doing. So like, yeah, give it a look. Um, there's cool stuff on here. And then a lot of the workshops have um, like, let's see, um, for instance, like this tidy single cell one, um, the, there's like a, a markdown available just like on, like they have like a whole GitHub. So it's, um, you can access this. I'm not sure if the orchestra workshops are still, available, but there's like also whole orchestra um, setups that you can like go through and have like, I guess like the the right R setup already. So like not having to install a ton of packages. So um, all of this like is still out there and still uh, very re available to anybody. Um, yeah, so it's kind of all I had. I don't know if anybody has any questions. <laughs>